All right, back in the saddle, Alice. Why have I been delaying my your invitation? Oh, that. Do you hate me that much, Jill? Yes. Does my presence make you that uncomfortable? Yes. No. Oh, okay. At this rate, I might just crash by your apartment. That way you can't just say no. Maybe I'll just crash for the night. We could have a sleepover, braid our hair, tell stories at night, shower together. Excuse me? You know, need some human warmth in that place. Your tits alone would fill my entire bathroom. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, you've only been friends for months and you're talking like this. You must have really hit it off. Man, you react too nonchalantly. It's no fun. React a little bit. Let me tease you for a second. I refuse. In all seriousness, though, any particular reason to keep turning down my invites? Yes. You're intolerable. I mean, it's not a date. Well, I don't know. I just want to have a conversation with you outside these four walls. No. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I registered for a night shift precisely to avoid waking up early. The earliest you've asked I've asked you out is 10 a.m., you know. That's early morning by my standards. I mean, it's not that I don't want to hang out. I just don't want to wake up early. You are hopeless. Anyway, I'm going to need another drink. Oh, oh, you need a big Brantini. You didn't even need to add that. I was going to give you a big... All of your drinks are going to be huge. You are going to... You are going to wonder what conversations we had before the night's over. I can promise you that much. Finally, that's the alma I know. A big Brantini. B. Mm, there it is. Okay. Holy crap. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we need six of these bad boys. There we go. And two of those. Okay. All aged and mixed. Uh, okay. Okay. Eight out of ten smug assholes would recommend it, but they're too be busy being smug assholes. <laughs> hey, then this is just the right drink for her. Have a way. Here you go. You know, Brantini's such a weird name. It was originally supposed to replicate the martini. Problem is, the BTC got a hold of brand of vermouth, and that was named after a certain automobile company, so on a weird whim, they changed the name. I see. Jill. Oh, God, she's loaded. Jill. <laughs> That's my drunk Alma voice. <laughs> That'd be a 4A696C6C or a 011 blah 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 blah. You're speaking binary woman, I think you've had enough. You're cut off! In binary, you have 15 ones. Do you celebrate your quince, quin, your 15th birthday party, eh, Jill? Don't think so. How about your sweet 16? Do you have anything special for that? <laughs> I like doing the drunk voice. Nope! Your 18th? 21st? Nah, none of those. I saw no point in making them any different from the other ones. Oh, but they are different. How so? Just celebrate your buddying sexuality. Sexuality. It's the point where society tells you is you can fuck. <laughs> They're starting to look appealing for other people to consider. Ugh. It's also hypocritical. They tell you you can, but you shouldn't. Fuck. <laughs> I guess that's one way of seeing it. By the way, you're looking kind of red. Like, I mean, you sort of look like a peach with a wig and a massively gelled cowlick. Sort of like the bosses. Doot, doot. All right. Um, although, oh, there's no point in celebrating those so late. This is one of the time middle school I was fed up with the teacher. I was eighth grade with the idiot was treating me like a kid. So one day I adjusted my shirt, pushed my boobs together with my arms and told him, teacher, you know how you could get me pray Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. Poor bastard couldn't look at me for the rest of the year. You're an evil child. I also got suspended, scolded, and grounded, but it was worth it. You are a walking problem. I was a blossoming woman, and I wasn't going to stand for it. No, you weren't. You were in eighth grade. Well, I mean, I guess that is before high school, but seriously, come on now. This is why I like numbers. Numbers don't wait your sexual evening to tell you that you shouldn't be sexual. How does that make sense? Numbers never betray you. They don't cross you. They don't expect you to form a family or give them grandkids. Do you think a 27 cares you have a Catholic wedding? No, but I do care that you're drunk. I am not tunk. Then spell your name. 416C6061. There. Not in hexadecimal. Elmbach. I'm calling you a cab. I'll be fine. I'm going home now. My brother-in-law's close by. He told me to call him when I was done. Bye! Ha ha ha! Success! Alright, good. Well, I've destroyed one customer for the evening. Who's the next one? Bring on the next contestant. Hello, sugar. 
Ow. Hello, Mr. Donovan. Like my pop used to say, never touch the ass of a woman with metallic arms. What? I think it's more like plastic and carbon fiber. The heart is fuck, and that's all my abdomen felt. Do you normally greet people like that? I'm a man that can't contain himself when he sees something he likes. Hmm, I see. Oh, but don't worry, you're safe. You're flatter than the field at my summer house. Oh, wow, goddamn. Bit of advice, you shouldn't provoke the ones serving your drinks or food. Oh, yeah, that's just general good tip in, in any, no matter where you go. Ooh, and on the heels of that, if a place closes... Don't order food 10 minutes before they do. If you do, go in, give a big tip, and apologize. I know you're thinking, well, I'm giving them business. They should be happy. Now, 10 minutes before they close, you're being an asshole, even if you're the nicest person on the planet. Apologizing and tipping ensures two things. One, they immediately diffuse the hatred towards you because the first thing they think when they see you coming in at that time is the hope that you might drop dead or spontaneously combust. The tip ensures that not only you're going to get great service, but they're also going to greet you with a smile and be genuinely happy you're there. Should they do that anyways? Kinda. But if you wanted to get out of work early and it's midnight, you probably don't want to see somebody however jolly coming through the door and ordering, like, a giant meal or a bunch of drinks. You get the idea. Anyway. Don't be offended, kid. You have your audience. I'm just not part of it. Fair enough. Today I'm making this a quick one. Gotta attend to business in a while. Haven't said that, I'll just have the usual. The usual, he says. Ah, the big old bear. Is that right? Donovan wants the usual. Three days and he already has the usual drink. I think it was... I think it was a beer, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a large beer. Pretty sure that's what it was. If I'm wrong, we'll find out, but I'm pretty sure he's a simple man with simple tastes. And his taste is a big old beer. Uh, oh, eight of those, yeah. One, two, three, yeah. That's two, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there we go. Mix, boom. Sir, the usual. Sure is. This will work. Sure, this will work. I thought that was it. What brings you here today, Mr. Hoffman? Did I screw it up? I thought I had that on the nose. Oh well. A girl I interviewed yesterday is coming again in a couple of weeks. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you succeed? Uh, who the hell do you think you're talking to? I'm Donovan D. Dawson, Triple D. I always get what I want. Yeah, sure you do. Sure, I had to blackmail the editors of other outlets, but the end result is what matters. I see. Wait, blackmail? You'd be surprised at the kind of stuff you can find out when you get the right people drunk. <laughs> You're telling... Yeah, did you... No, you weren't here for my last conversation, but I know exactly what you mean. Hey, signature on that glass over there. Yeah. That big titty Lillum was here? I really didn't notice. She... The way she was sitting, it was kind of hard to make an assessment of her physical appearance. I'll, 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 I'll look more closely next time. For you, Triple D. For you. For a friend. Kind of. She came yesterday before the concert, yeah. Anything juicy come out of her visit? Uh, she annoyed the hell out of me. By the way, how was her concert? Uh, was there a, any slurred speech in her performance? Gossip-worthy? Eh, not really. I mean, if there was, I'd tell you, man. Oh, God, if I could bury her, I would give you wheelbarrows full of dirt. I'll keep my ears open next time, buddy, don't you worry. Tabloid-worthy? Come on, Jill, I mean, let's think. Come on, there has to be something. Well, her love for what she does is so honest and pure that anyone who tries to ruin it should be ashamed. Oh. If it were actually me here, I'd just be like, give me a notepad. I'll keep, you know what? Give me a nondescript GoPro. I'll set it up behind the gin. Ah, don't give me that shit. Throw me a bone here, anything. I got nothing. Everyone has a price. How much you spill for the beans? Um, I mean, I don't know how to adjust for inflation given today's prices with future prices, but... Chuck me a grand, I'll tell you something. I'm serious here. She said nothing that could be used against her that you didn't already know. Fine. Say, many of your interns women, Mr. Donovan? All my interns are women, kid. Every single one of them. It's a pack of hungry, desperate bitches. Oh, wow. You are a savage, man. Why only women? You ever watch Race for Hope? Um, I don't think so. A movie about a journalist looking for clues regarding a murder. A tacky movie had everything. Romance, action, a dog with sunglasses. It was also sold this weird, fantastical image of what journalism is. I'm guessing lots of girls saw in high school wanted to become journalists. And now I have to deal with that shit. How can you be so sure? My first brother-in-law was a doctor. Okay. He said that a couple of years after that emergency heart movie, all of his interns were women for a long while. And this is why I don't let brats barely understand what responsibility responsibilities are pick a career. Do you perhaps know a girl named Kimberly Lavalette? Oh, I think I know that one. Doesn't ring a bell, who is she? Nah, eh, nobody forget I said anything. 
an interesting preview of tomorrow's news, or any interesting, blah, blah, blah. You expect me to share information you wouldn't share your scoop on the singer? I didn't have anything, or at least apparently I don't remember. How can one share when there's honestly nothing to share? Uh-huh. I'm gonna be a good citizen today and let this one pass. Have you heard of a group called the Harbingers? Ah, vaguely so. It rings a bell. There's some group wanting to overthrow the White Knights. I read their manifest in the bathroom once. Interesting piece, and even better makeshift toilet paper. They talk about how the organization is corrupt, full of mob bosses, or something like that. I think I've heard about that somewhere. What of them? They sent a message to some outlets saying they approve of their claims. They're going to release it to the public tomorrow. Ooh, a day before the big Alice Rabbit phenomenon. Ooh, that'd be interesting to see, I think. I know, right? All right, kid, give me a Bleeding Jane and we'll call it a day. All right, he wants a Bleeding Jane. That's a change of pace. I mean, sure. Uh, starts with the B, Bleeding Jane. Hey, you know what? I'll, uh, we'll keep it simple for you, buddy. You got an interview. I don't want to screw you up too much. You entertain me, Triple D. That is why you avoid my wrath. So it was one of those three and... Uh, oh, blended. Okay. So we just got to wait a little bit. Do, 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 do. And done. Serve it up, baby. Simple enough for you, I see. I'm starting to regret giving you a small dose, sir. So I've heard this is Dana Zane's bar. Is that true? Yep. Never thought I'd hear about the undefeated of the West again. More so after that incident with the bears. What? Where is she? She's out running. Yeah, get on with the bear. Six years ago, a cash-strapped Zane, Dana Zane entered an underground ring for money. Faced ten enraged grizzly bears, she beat all of them without killing them. That's impressive. Was this before or after she got a robot arm? I heard she set them free afterwards, too. And you were there? I was drunk and bored. What can I say? How do you end up drunk and bored at a wrestling match featuring a star wrestler and six ra angry bears? Do you know if she lost her arm there? Can't remember. Too drunk. Maybe she had a prosthetic then, too. I heard someone there suggest that she lost after throwing a baseball out of a stadium. I'm never going to learn the truth of this, am I? Threw it so hard her arm fell off. I don't believe that. Sounds more like an unsubstantiated rumor. You think? More like something she made up. Well, I gotta go. Next time you see Dana, thank her for thank her for winning me my second yacht. Oh, you bet money on it. I knew betting on her ass was the right choice. Frig, I bet on her ass. She fought six grizzlies. I don't care what the odds are. I'm betting on her all the time. I mean, who? God, woman fought grizzly bears. That's insane. I mean, seriously, you gotta figure those things are what between 800 to 1,000 pounds, and there's six of them. So let's say they're at their prime. It's 6,000 pounds of pissed off nature trying to rip you apart, and you beat them all without killing them. That's damn impressive. Got a brand new respect for the boss. All right. It is now safe to keep playing. I don't think it's ever safe. That is a lie. And judging by all the faces I'm seeing right there, I have... Wait. Is, is the person with the cat ears there? The singer's at somebody else. She's got a big cross on her chest. I don't... I don't remember if that's... Huh. I'm not sure. I think that's somebody else entirely. Yeah, 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 no, because Kara Mickey had two eyes and no eye patch. That's someone new. Haven't met them yet. Oh, well. But you know what? The bar's quiet right now. Seems like a good place to end off. Well, like, you know what? Let's see who shows up next. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Is it going to be someone we know? Oh, God, just a jukebox again? Jukebox is fine. Ah, boss, you're back. Oh, it's you. Yeah, sorry about not being here earlier. What were you doing? Yeah, I had a brief meeting with the B my BTC regional manager. Oh, everything all right? Yeah, as all right as it can be, considering that we're closing eventually. What? I don't know. Brian said he'll be safe for a few months while the paperwork's filled and everything's being put in order. Oh. I was also talking to him about you. Uh, about me? Yeah, I was telling him to do whatever it takes to ensure you don't spend too much time without a job. It's possible to reassign you ASAP after closing. Why are we closing? Hey, if it helps, Brian might be the angriest of us all. They want to close the only bar in the whole area that hasn't given me any headaches, he said. Heh. <laughs> what about Gil? He's the one that worries me the most, actually. He's kind of working using the credentials of another guy that was working here before. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling he was here illegally. Who? Yeah, the one who bought a levitation potion and then threw himself off a building. We have potions? Oh my god. Magic's real. Ah yes, the levitation potion story. Use weird euphemisms, boss. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that Gil will find a job after all this. Who? Just who is Gil? I have an idea of who he is, but I'm still putting the pieces together. Anyway, back to work. Imminent closure is no excuse to slack off. Yeah, I guess so. Sort of like a sword of Damocles hanging over my head, but hey, no reason to slack off. 
But it is a reason to stop right here before things get any more interesting or dire. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And until next time, my name's Rye. You guys take care of yourselves.